Hello, world of YouTube. So, welcome to Munchies with Jai Live. So, what we are cooking today is mustard greens with bacon. Uh, I have rice cooking in the instant pot. So, let's get cooking. I'm going to actually head on over to the sink right here, and I'm going to clean up the bacon, and I'm going to clean up the. Um, and I'm also going to clean up the mustard greens as well. I'm not exactly sure if I, I'm streaming from the desktop, so it's a little bit more challenging than streaming on my phone. So anyways, uh, I'll move the cutting board so that you have a better view of the, of the sink, and then we'll get cooking. It's just me now. <laughs> totally new channel. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to put down the microphone here so that I can hear a little bit better. So I'll share with you this beautiful piece of bacon. I had to defrost it. Oh, big old slab. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we're going to clean this with some salt. So I want to share with you how the mustard greens look. So these are pickled in salt and um, salt water solution. And I usually pick this up from the local grocery store. So just um, give it a quick rinse. Because it does. It does contain some sand um, when they pickle it because they just harvest it from the from the gardens and stuff like that and then they just you know get processing. It's a little different than when we're consuming it. So I just take my time. We're going to give it about two to three rinse, uh, two to three rinse cycles. For example, when the first wash, the liquid is very murky. So I'm going to clean that off. There's also sand and dirt at the bottom of, of the base. Um, On the steam bowl, so I want to ensure that it's clean. Now there's the second rinse. I just check the bottom of the stems, make sure there's no sand that's locked in there when I, because I'm going to chop this up into fine pieces. I don't want to have any loose sand bits, you know, I don't like eating the gritty stuff. I actually have one of the, um, 
of this cookup video coming up soon. So hopefully, hopefully you give it a try. Um, where I actually really put in the effort, the whole step of it, close up. Pretty cool. So I'm excited to share that one with you guys. Okay, let's focus. Not too bad. As always, cooking takes a little bit of time, uh, but I enjoy it. It's my little therapy session for the day, you know, like when I'm working and doing a bunch of other stuff, cooking is nice. Although cooking and filming is a different story. That's, you know, it, it, uh, it's cooking and filming is a much bigger challenge because I'm doing two tasks at once versus just cooking for enjoyment. Water's coming out nice and clear now. It's no longer murky. The second wash was yellow. Uh, so I know I cleaned out all of I cleaned out all of the um, the salt and the vinegar and the water. So what I do, we're going to cut very fine pieces. They're going to be about a centimeter long per piece. You don't want it too small because then when it's cooked, you don't get to have that nice crunchiness, especially on the stem pieces. I like the stem pieces to be a little bit bigger for a nice texture. And then when we're coming up to the leafy portions, then I'll cut it finer. Um, all right, let's get back to it. This is one of my girlfriend's favorite meals. So she loves this simple dinner or simple lunch meal. You can have it any time of the day and it does not take long to prepare. Okay. The bowl. So after I cut it, there's gonna be a ton of water dripping. Um, just gonna let it settle. This dish is actually very popular in southern China and uh, and in Vietnamese cuisine. Alrighty, just trying to drain any excess water without dropping vegetables in it, of course, right? Without it dropping back into the sink. So, okay. All right, let me present it to you right here. Bam! Looks beautiful. Nice green mustard. Whoop. <laughs> I got lucky. It didn't fall over. All right, let's get cooking to the bacon. We'll set this over here since we're going to be cooking that. So just part, uh, this is just part of what we do in my household, like what I was taught growing up as well, is whenever we have raw meat, we always use salt to clean. That helps get rid of any of the gaminess, whether it's pork, beef, 
deer, lamb, fish. You always just use a little bit of cold water and a little bit of salt and you wash it. And gets rid of all the greasiness, all the sticky, you know, whatever the animal like stuff has. It's really like I'm cooking bacon and there's the skin right here. There's a lot of, la there's a layer of fat. So you just kind of rub it in so that when you, when you cook it, it doesn't smell as bad. The inside of the meat doesn't matter too much. You know, you just do a quick rinse. Um, it also, by doing this, you also give the, you also give the meat a little bit of extra flavor. Starting off, it, you're adding salt, and the salt will dissolve in water, and it will dissolve when you meat. All right. Okay, um, let me get a, let me get a paper towel. I don't really want to work with the wet piece of bacon. I'm actually going to use the torch because there's a little bit of because there's a little bit of hair in the bacon or on the bacon skin. I don't want to eat it. You don't want to eat pork hair. So do that. Clean the clean the plate. Take off the napkin. I don't want anything flammable toward near it. Um, all right, I'm just going to do it up front, a little closer for you to see. Bacon. All right. All done. Intel. The skin is all... Nice, smooth again, the hair is all gone. What's up, Sesame? You smell it? You smell the torch me? <laughs> I know, it smells pretty good, huh? It smells amazing. And then as for cutting the meat, oh yeah, I was supposed to explain it as well. So cutting the meat, I'm going to cut about a centimeter wide per strip, and then I'll dice it into smaller pieces. Why we do this in a lot of Asian cooking is to um, increase the yield of meat so you're not just having big chunks and every bite has some meat in it instead of just, you know, you eat meat or vegetable. Um, it gives you a combination of both. Really helps to enhance the meal. I think the next video I'm going to be doing is cutting board maintenance and knife maintenance. This is my last sharp knife. The other knives are getting a little bit dull, so it's time for sharpening. So um, I've put the whetstone in a little uh, lunch Tupperware container and it's soaking. So I let it soak for about 24 hours before I sharpen my knives. Anyways, back to the topic of cutting this bacon. The skin is always going to be tough, so a sharp knife is necessary. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, beautiful. Look at that. How beautiful the Texture is. Woo wee! I'm so excited. I mean, Sesame is excited. She's like, Oh, you're, are you going to share that? Ain't that right? 
in the recessory. to use the same container, the same plate. So I can't, when I cut the bacon so thin, oh yeah, I should share see how thinly I cut it, huh? This thin like this. See, it's really thin. Maybe a finger width, um, and very thin, as you can see. So this helps with quick stir fries. If you use thicker pieces of meat, then it will take longer to cook. So that's why. And then if it takes longer to cook, it, take long, it takes longer to eat before, I and mean, it takes longer before you can eat. So that's why the meat is cut so thin. Drooling, <laughs> you know, you know it's lunchtime when you're drooling and cooking food. Is it still just me? That's okay. What's up, pup? Is this? Oh, it probably was the bacon, but then you got cut in half. You're hungry too, says me. Me too.
my dogs Lucky and Sesame, which they have their own channel. They are enjoying life. They're just watching me cut up this bacon, smacking their lips. Normally they sleep during a lot during the day, but not today. So some of you ask me, why did I change this channel? Um, from the Dank City to Munchies with Jai, it's just because, you know, I got a little bored of making those videos. It just felt so, it just felt a little stale, you know? Um, with so many states going legal and all that, it just didn't make as much sense for me to do it. And vaporization has gotten pretty big now. There's a big community for it. So it's just fun to be, um, it's just fun to be exploring new creative ways of making content. And cooking is a way of making content. Here, I'll show it. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful. So this bacon, um, so we're gonna put away the cutting board, put it on the sink. I'm actually gonna clean this wood board first. I don't like raw meat sitting on my wood board. So we'll do that. Don't worry, I clean the counter after I film. So the raw meat and stuff on that counter is fine. Oh yeah, how did I come up with this name, Munchies with Jai? Well, whenever I get high, I always get the munchies. I get the munchies. I don't know about you, but I sure do. So that's how I decided to call it Munchies with Jai, because gotta satisfy that food craving. I remember when I used to live in San Francisco, I would get high and I would just go to the taqueria and order the super taco and order a super burrito or something, you know, the whole nine yards. And, and chow down. different. It may not be everyone's cup of tea. Since many of you guys joined to watch me get high, test vaporizers, try out different strains. Okay. Stick you over this way a little bit. Boom. Now we're going to work up the sauce. Because the pickled mustard have salt, we're going to use some sugar. Just looking for it. Kitchen still looks a little bit messy from filming. What dish did I make? I just made it. Ah, yes, deep fried catfish, deep fried catfish, southern style, with a little bit of twist with whatever I had on hand. So we're going to use about a tablespoon of white sugar, whatever sugar you have on hand. I just use white sugar sometimes for this cook-up, just easiest. 
and to use white sugar. We're gonna get the liquor. This is my favorite to cook with. I don't drink, I just cook with liquor. Huh. Alrighty, we'll see you next time.